right now. A volcano is erupting in Iceland, spewing ash and lava into the air. Just look at those pictures. A geophysicist who surveyed the eruption over the weekend says it's the most powerful so far. Officials have ordered evacuations in a nearby town and at the famous Blue Lagoon. Despite the eruption, Iceland's airport remains unaffected and it's operating as usual. Joining us now is Christopher <clears throat> Hamilton, planetary volcanologist and associate professor at the University of Arizona's Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. You've been uh, to this particular uh, volcano, volcanic eruption. Can you just give us some sense of what it's like to be there, what you see, because the pictures are absolutely beautiful, knowing that they can be very destructive as well. Yeah, well, today would be a horrible day there. It's close to freezing, rainy, and high winds. Uh, this area, although it's really close to Reykjavik, is actually very, very remote and largely uninhabited. And the first few years of the eruption took place in a part where there were no people. It wasn't directly affecting the town, and everybody had a fantastic show. That has changed since December, when the eruption site moved much closer to the town of Grendevik. It's a very active uh, fishing port, a very important site, and this has really changed the overall character. So it's absolutely beautiful when it's erupting. It's in this absolutely wild and, and rugged area, um, but now it's actually affecting a, a town and infrastructure that's a uh, concern to the entire country. Yeah, there was a, an emergency called um, by uh, authorities there. I, I do want to ask you about whether or not science is getting closer um, or, or is in a good place to try to predict when these happen, because I think there have been three eruptions the past four months. Yeah, the science is actually really getting much better for being able to understand the inflation. So basically the whole area is a part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which is moving on to this peninsula. And the area is almost breathing as magma comes into it. And you can see that from satellites and from GPS. So people have a really good idea of when the ground is swelling. But what's happened is that the area has been so cracked with hundreds of thousands of earthquakes since 2021, that now it's kind of leaky. So before, you can think of a magma chamber as like a pressurized keg. And when you tap it, you get a really high discharge rate in the beginning, and then it wanes. But now that keg is really cracked with all these different eruptions. And so the warning time is getting to be much shorter. And in fact, for this most recent episode, the largest of the uh, episodes we've seen since December, and in fact, during the entire span of the eruption, there was very little warning. So it's a changing character. We can predict it, but uh, not to the hour, but we can certainly see it to, to when, when particular days that are going to be at risk. I think you talked about how many earthquakes, you said hundreds of thousands of earthquakes have happened since 2021. Were there quite a few? Do you see quite a few before you start seeing this eruption? Is that a, an indicator? Yeah, no, that's a very good, good point. So in 2021, there were actually 40,000 earthquakes in February for about the month leading up to the eruption. And everybody in the country in Reykjavik and Grendevik was feeling it knowing that something was changing. So the earthquakes do typically continue up until the last moment when the magma gets so close to the surface that uh, from there it just bursts through in a single event. But seismicity is a major indicator for the movement of magma as it's traveling towards the surface. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear when you are standing close enough to experience, not be putting yourself in danger, but close enough to experience this kind of eruption here? Yeah, so these are called effusive eruptions. So they're dominated by lava flows that are being emplaced and they're moving over the ground and they're radiating a lot of heat. If you were to look at them, they're, they're really glowing a red and an orange. It'd be like opening an oven. You can just feel your skin begin to dry. And there's also in this area, a lot of uh, moss and vegetation that begins to uh, burn a little bit. L last uh, summer, they were referring to it as moss door, uh, those burning sort of mordor like uh, area. And so some of the smoke can be an issue. A and um, in the instance here, if the eruption does make it to the sea, um, that sort of um, general soft, slow character of the lava could dramatically change with interaction with seawater. And really the main ones are when you begin to get to hot lava interacting with seawater, it can produce a chlorine gas, which is extremely nauseous, and even hydrofluoric acids. So while some of these eruptions are just beautiful to be able to sit back and watch, if it does become an ocean entry, and it's really just a few hundred meters away from potentially getting to an ocean wow. entry point, um, then the character would change and be very dangerous. 
How quickly is the lava moving? Because, you know, everyone watches. Sometimes it's extremely slow as it gets closer and closer to civilization. But in this case, uh, the closest town is, 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 you know, is in danger. How, how quickly is it moving? Do you have some sense of that? Yeah, so as I mentioned, these uh, magma chambers are a bit like uh, the, these kegs. And so in the beginning, you're going to get a huge uprush, many, many uh, kilometers or miles of fissure just all opening in a curtain of fire called a, a lava fountain. And when that lava uh, is very, very hot, it's very fluid. So it's moving uh, almost like um, water or oil at those temperatures, a little bit more viscous, but it, it very, very fast. And once it cools and starts to get a skin on it, a little bit of a, a, a crust, it will focus into channels and move more slowly. Um, but one way to look at these flows is that as long as you keep the tap going, it, the flows are going to continue to march forward. It's a, a little bit uh, like a, a zombie slow moving and eventually just continuing to march and march and march. And so as long as the eruption keeps going, the lava keeps going too. So very fast in the beginning um, and, and then slowing down with a sort of uh, relentless march. Christopher Hamilton, I have to tell you, I wish I would have known that the title volcanologist existed when I was in college because that is a really cool job. Thank you so much for geeking out with us this morning. I appreciate your time. Well, okay. thank you, Sarah. It was a lot of fun.